Good morning. Okay. No, no coffee yet? Uh, okay, thank you, thank you. Um, welcome to the uh, Cisco sponsored room. Uh, my name is Gary and I'm just sort of acting as the host for the day. Welcome. Uh, this is our third session today. Uh, we have two more later in the day, one right after this and a, uh, our fifth and final right after the lunch break. So I hope you can come back and join us then. Um, just a quick note, when you all came in the room, I think you were probably given a little card. We are doing a drawing at the end of the session for very, very cool Philips Bluetooth speaker. So if you want to fill out the card, we'll do a drawing at the end of the session. Um, but without any further ado, uh, welcome to OpenStack and the Cisco Next, Gen Next Generation Data Center. Um, your panel leader or moderator today is going to be Mike Cohen, one of our senior product managers. And I will turn it over to Mike to introduce our panel. Very good. Thanks a lot, Gary. So as Gary mentioned, the session is OpenStack in the Cisco Next Generation Data Center. And my name is Mike Cohen. I'm a director of product management at Cisco Systems. And I'm joined today by a, disting a distinguished panel of our customers. So this includes Martin Klein, a principal architect at SAP, Brenda May, the enterprise architect at Standard Bank of South Africa, Cesar Martinez Segura, the IAS Solutions Network Architect at BBVA, and Maxime Popov, the head of R&D at CAS Transcom. Each of these individuals has actually played a key role in designing and deploying an OpenStack cloud within their organizations. And at previous summits, I would use a talk like this to talk about our, the advantages of our Cisco data center solutions, including our ACI, Nexus, and U UCS products. In this session, we actually wanted to take a different approach. We wanted to give you a chance to hear directly from our customers, the architects that are building and designing their solutions, about the challenges they faced, how they resolved them, and how Cisco helped along the way. So without further ado, I want to introduce Martin Klein and let him start the presentation. So, hello, everybody. As Mike mentioned, I'm working for SAP. We are um, a software company based in Germany. Um, we are actually market leader in enterprise software. And as most software companies, we are currently undergoing a transformation from delivering our products on premise to delivering cloud solutions. And for that, we need a private cloud optimized for actually our workloads, which are not yet in a state where we can deploy them in, in a a public cloud environment very easily. So we have very special um, availability constraints and also data security is very important for our customers. Um, this is why we decided to build our own um, sub-optimized cloud powered by OpenStack. And we are currently running that in 13 data centers or in 13 regions. Um, some of them have even multiple data centers um, stretched around the globe to deliver to all our key markets. Um, we have quite a big portfolio of services that our internal customers or our software lines of business can consume on our cloud. We um, offer the standard Nova, Cinder, Neutron, Keystone, Swift stuff, but we also offer um, the a little bit younger projects like Manila, Designate, and Barbican for the more advanced OpenStack stuff. And we put quite some um, work on top of OpenStack to have an um, automation service for our customers that does uh, the on-machine automation and software installation. We call it Lyra. Um, and we have some more sub-specific um, enhancement to OpenStack in regards to billing and the uh, dashboard which makes a more um, fluent experience for our customers. One key focus for um, our OpenStack deployment is um, that we have requirements to have multiple types of workloads work side by side in a single network environment. So our cloud actually needs multiple hypervisor types, bare metal machines, um, our NFS as a service in the same L2 network for performance reasons and also for security reasons. So we needed a solution where we can basically scale to a large number of L2 networks because that's an integral part of our security um, design but also have a large number of um, different devices and different um, workload types all connected to the same L2 network. To give you a little overview of our um, 
architecture, how it's actually looking like. At the top, facing the customer, we have our OpenStack layer. There we have our API contract, which is stable um, for our customer. And that is in itself running on our, what we call control plane. It's a Kubernetes cluster where we are running all the API servers, the databases, and what else you need to run an OpenStack deployment. Um, on our um, operating system layer, we are using CoreOS, which we are also automatically bootstrapping to run Kubernetes on. And for our hypervisors, we run KVM also on CoreOS and VMware, obviously not on CoreOS. Um, and we are running that all on top of a UCS fabric, um, which we use to run our hypervisors, the bare metal workload, and also the control plane itself. Um, our entire OpenStack is built in a way that we are um, not leveraging a lot of standard implementations or reference implementations, but we are trying to have a strict separation between um, the control plane and the data plane. So we are heavily relying on um, orchestrating enterprise equipment that we already have built up in the data center or that we at least have a, um, an operational um, infrastructure in place that guys that need to operate that at scale and uh, monitor that. So we decided not to, to leverage a lot of the reference implementations at the moment, but more rely on proven technology that we already have in the data center. So this is why we, our Cinder is running our NetApp boxes. Elbas is basically controlling our F5s and um, Neutron is calling um, out to Mike's Cisco ACI. Um, We are doing this to have basically the ability to run independent service level objects and scale them independently from our control plane. So our data plane needs to stay up at five nines. Our control plane is not so important. So taking a hit on the API and having a little downtime there is an inconvenience for our customers. But since we are not a public cloud offering, but a private one, as long as the solution that our customer builds and presents to the outside is still running, that's the bigger issue we needed to, to solve. And that's why we um, decided to have a, a very strict split between control plane and data plane. Also, we can, uh, in that way, leverage all the fancy new stuff that Kubernetes gives us in terms of um, self-healing, supervision, scaling, and um, an easy way to deploy actually the same payload to all those data centers we need to manage in parallel. Um, we decided for the Cisco ACI part as the L2 part because we, as you've seen, need to integrate a, a lot of different pieces of equipment into one L2 domain. Some of them being able to speak some overlay protocols themselves. The software solutions we need to integrate, of course, are the most advanced in that part, but we also need to introduce a lot of equipment like our storage um, boxes that have limited or no SDN capabilities and will most likely not get them. So. We invested a lot of work into um, writing drivers together with Mike's team to have a Cisco ACI using Neutron HPB scale up to more than 4,000 networks whilst they're having a VLAN as the base contract between the device and the fabric. So we moved a lot of the intelligence in that is needed for scaling that up and running that large number of um, networks into the fabric itself and not try to push it on the device. So all our connected devices only see the most simple network model available. So it's the VLAN network model in OpenStack. But we try to basically um, run on all, all our scaling inside the fabric and do all our intelligence inside the fabric and have the fabric do the hard work also performance-wise, like encapsulation and decapsulation of all the overlay protocols. So thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brenda May. I'm from Standard Bank of Africa. I'm the infrastructure architect for um, Standard Bank and been very involved in deploying our private cloud. So just to tell you a little bit about our bank. We're 153 years old. We are the largest bank in um, Africa. We run, operate across 20 countries. We've been listed on our stock exchange since 1970, and we have about 44,000 employees. If you take our insurance subsidiary, subsidiaries, it's about 55,000. And in South African rands, not euros, I suppose it makes a big difference when you bring it down to euros, we're about a 2 trillion rand operation, but down to euros, it's 128. 
So I don't even need to tell you the problem that we were solving while we were doing our private cloud. It's very similar to everything you've heard from everyone this week. We were trying to move faster. We were trying to reduce our costs. We were trying to standardize. We were trying to create a platform to increase innovation for our clients. Um, when I say reduce maintenance and support, it was very much targeted at people viewing that automation is that silver bullet that's going to drive down those operational costs for you. Um, and then trying to improve our end user performance. That's that whole mantra that you're going to be able to um, s allow your customer to self-serve and in so doing you're, you're driving based on their demands. Very much specific this slide is to, 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 to the principles we put together for our private cloud because we created a perfect storm for ourselves when it came to our data center network. So when it came to our private cloud, we wanted to deliver what matched to the customers. We'd been on this journey for a while, unfortunately, well, longer than we'd wanted to be on this journey. But I do believe as a large organization with a lot of history, we had a lot to learn. Um, so we, we had to reevaluate the principles we set out for ourselves up front and then and turn around and say, we actually have to deliver what matters up front. At first, we wanted to do this one hit wonder, this absolute nirvana, everything we thought the customer might want, it all had to sing and dance for them. We had to reevaluate our, our, our um, approach and turn around and say that it what matters most to the communities that were going to use it. Um, at the same time, I might add that our organization was going through a large organizational transformation, doing things like going down the DevOps journey. We were implementing or we, we, we had taken on the, this um, scaled agile framework. Um, we, we'd taken on an agile journey. So we'd done all these things inside the organization to reorder how we were working. All that did to our, to our infrastructure services is actually push the demand higher because we now had these feature teams who wanted to move quicker, release quicker, um, dev DevOps teams who wanted an API that they wanted to engage with the organization. So we, we really had to be quite um, deliberate about those principles. Um, the, the, the next line item is really just code for don't assume. Um, we did a lot of that up front. We did this big, as I said, this one one we assumed a lot. Um, we, we had to fit into a CRCD um, approach for our, for our customers. I don't believe that we are yet are very good at the CRCD below the line for our private cloud thinking, but our consumer community above the line were definitely in that space and we needed to be able to enable that. Working hard to keep things simple. It's so easy to, to have magpie syndrome. It's so easy to see that next silver object fly by and think, oh, that would be nice. And if we added this and if we just put this in and, and, and if a new layer came in and we just did this, it would be fantastic. And our, our, our consumer would really love this. We had to stop that behavior. We had to stop and say, keep things simple. We, um, the whole cloud native versus any other workload, we have a massive legacy environment in our organization. You don't be 153 years young and have this, not have a lot of legacy that you're carrying with us. Inside that legacy is process legacy, it's technology legacy, it's, it's even thinking legacy, it's human legacy. So we had to try and deal with that. We are a bank, we had to be secure by design. Um, we are a bank that's gone through some, some drama recently as it relates to security. So, so it's our number one program in our organization is, is related to security. So we had to be secure by design and we could not compromise that at all. Um, open source, becoming a first class citizen in our bank was quite a, um, a, a, a pivotal day. We, we had this very much ISV um, type of way of approaching things. So becoming a first class citizen was very important to us. Commitment to engineering. So I think at first this was lip service on our part. We kept saying we were going to be doing it. We kept saying how important it was to us, but we actually didn't behold it. Um, we had to choose information, innovative partners. And when I say rinse and repeat, if I tell you that we've been on this journey for a while, we honestly had to take our approaches very often, clean them off and say, well, that didn't work for us and what is the next, ne next step in this? When I say we had this perfect storm, this was, these were the objectives of our private cloud. We had chosen OpenStack. At the very same time, we had approached a life cycle position where our data center network needed to be refreshed. Five years previously, we had built out a massive brand new modern data center, and now we were facing the refresh of our data center. Unfortunately for us, our private cloud journey definitely rushed the goalie on our data center refresh. Um, and, and what had happened to us is that we were still thinking about how we were going to um, fix our network. We had historically allowed our, our data center network to become very fragmented, 
quite often a, a product of the way we funded projects, not necessarily a product of the technology we were using, but our problem there is if we wanted to have a private cloud that now held automation, self-service provisioning as key, we couldn't work with this fragmented network that we had anymore. So we ha the rushing of the goalie was that we had these slow, gradual plans to transform our data center network, go down the ACI journey together with Cisco, and then suddenly, we needed to fix this fragmentation, get our ACI in, um, break down the, 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 the security boundaries, follow our security team's new isolation strategy. So we were really in a lot of drama. We, we, had, we needed all the support we could get. Uh, I've got a little note there at the bottom that says thank you, and this is a thank you to Cisco and Suse. I think we put them under a lot of pressure. I, I, I'm not even sure if they did it because I nagged so much once a week on a Monday afternoon. <laughs> but I don't, know what, I don't know why they did it first, but I'm just so grateful. Grateful. Um, so, so what, what I'm saying there is that we, they went ready with the drivers. We had chosen SUSE OpenStack Cloud on our, as our OpenStack distribution, and they weren't ready. We needed to use the Liberty Release. The reason we needed to use the Liberty Release, as you'll see from our architecture, we are a, um, um, a Z series site, and we do use Z Linux. And we had a number of workloads and, and services to our consumer community that needed us to be able to um, orchestrate to um, a, Z, a ZOS outcome, I mean a Z Linux outcome. So, so we'd really put them under pressure for that. Other challenges we face when I say losing the shackles of the past, we're a bank and all the other banks I'm sure can attest to this, especially if, you, if you're not a young bank, um, is that you build processes on process to manage process and that process belongs to a person who's quite passionate about the process and it beca they become quite religious about the process and, and, and honestly we kept trying to fit in instead of turning around and saying that we're changing the way these people are working. We're taking this new digital native community and we're servicing them and the, and the people who are attempting to be digital immigrants really need to go down the journey. We don't need to change this enabling technology to accommodate their current thinking. So that was hard for us. All of us would know if you're talking digital um, um, cloud native versus anything else in your environment in the legacy, you have to get people to start thinking that this is now about the application's resilience and not about the infrastructure redundancy. When I say how to eat the elephant, and I'll tell you now that we have been on this journey for two years, and this two-year journey has made us change the approach um, dramatically. In that change of approach, um, we have had to turn around and say, especially with the, the position we had where, where we were rushing the goalie on our data center implementation, we really had to turn around and say, what can we deliver in small pieces? So it literally became a site of two data center implementations. Uh, we, we are a dual um, fabric across those two data centers. We literally had to turn around and say, we will deliver this little piece of the fabric in this data center first. We will follow that. We will allow the automation and the cloud um, implementation to start in that data center for that availability zone, and then we will move on. So we've really had to take Agile to the extreme. One of my comments um, at the bottom about <laughs> our vendor supporting us is that we, it's really hard to take an Agile approach on a physical deployment, an infrastructure physical deployment, but we've literally had our third parties vendors supporting us in this Agile approach to um, implementing, our, uh, implementing our network, never mind our, our private cloud. Um, Third-party vendor readiness was one, was one of the major challenges for us. Um, I'm, I'm sure I, sp this, I speak to everyone in the organization that has got third-party um, um, proprietary vendors that are going to stay there for a while. We choose a release, we need certification, um, and we really did put a large number of vendors under a great amount of pressure to support us in time. I will tell you that everyone's rallied together. We're not, we're not unhappy with the position that we're in now. It's really just about making the delivery very real. So. Um, to that point, both SUSE and, and Cisco were fantastic. They, they, they gave us an early, early release of drivers. Um, they, they set up a labs purpose-built for our, for our de de development of the releases. And honestly, they've had, to pay, they've had to play referee and adjudicator for us. We are, I go back to the shackles of the past. We've got people with legacy thinking. We've got the digital natives. We've got these two schools of thought in our organization. And we needed someone to adjudicate and almost mediate um, for us across these parties. And, and, and then the vendors have been fantastic. Thanks, thanks very much, um, Mark, and a whole bunch of the advanced services teams inside Cisco have played a massive role in that. Um, also, and I think we do this all the time, I, I imagine a lot of organizations do, we use Cisco's advanced services team to, to work through our data center architectures with us. And um, 
to help us in the deployment and, and they've been with us throughout this. I mean, literally take, we've, we sat in Las Vegas at Cisco Live this year in a quiet room fighting it out. So I think we have a photo of all the protagonists who couldn't agree for however many months. We have a photo of us with this piece of whiteboard paper and the mediator of our drama. So I couldn't, I couldn't be more grateful to them for that. Um, that's really the way we've, the journey we've taken. There's probably a lot more. I, I, when I was preparing for this, I had to try and acknowledge that every single one of these line items I could probably lax, wax lyrical on for about two or three hours. So happy if anyone wants to catch me to, to go through, the, through how we actually drove this out. But it's been a fantastic journey, and we're quite happy with where we are at now. It's now just making our customer happy. Thanks. Well, good morning, everyone. I have been told that I have to be very briefly, so I, <laughs> I'm, try, I'm going to try to go to the point. Um, I don't know if I know all of you, most of you know BBVA, but for all of us who don't, um, BBVA is a global financial service group that has presence in 35 countries around the world. It has. Um, but we are like 130,000 employees and we have like 67 million customers. So what we are doing in BBVH is to build a, a, a cloud, a global cloud, in order to implement in, all, in some imp uh, important countries where we have presence. And um, we, are, we were focused on, on the principles key to, to install this cloud that were that it has to be automated, that has to be completely automated in order to implement the same solutions in these principal countries. And this cloud has to be uh, self-served in order to provide the APIs for the developers to, to use it. Of course, this cloud has to be open sourced and, and one of the main goals was to to reduce costs. This has to be as well to data centric where all um, the data has to be in real time in the, in the, inside the infrastructure. We, um, as well, it has to be reliable where all the infrastructure could be uh, changed in, um, very, very fast without any outage. And of course, it has to be secure. It's very important for us being as a bank. As you can see, we have to combine our cloud with our traditional IT. And because of that, because most of the services that this cloud is going to consume are in the, in the current IT. And because of that, we, we have built two separate fabrics in order to try to isolate the, the, few, the, the changes we have in, in the cloud because of the new, of the, uh, versions we are having in, in OpenStack. And because of that, we, we decided to, to separate these, these two fabrics. And thanks to the, the, the solutions we have with, with ACI, we can balance the hardware between these two platforms in order to, to take an advantage of this, of this hardware. Then if we are growing in the, in the cloud and we are decreasing the, the current in the current IT, well, this is the, the objective. It's very simple because we can move the leaves we have in, in our CPD from one world to the other. We have this divided our CPD in, in, as I told you, in two fabrics. And now in Spain, we have like 150 leaves. That is like a, a, a small switches. And well, so the idea is when we started with this new project, we, we thought, OK, we have to find a, a, net, a, a new network who could accomplish the goals we, 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 we are having in, in the new cloud for installing the new cloud. And then we, at the end, we, we decided to install ACI because we needed to, to have a distributed layer two network and a, and a distributed layer three any cast gateways uh, for the traditional and IT and, for, and also for, for the cloud. 
And for the cloud as well, we needed a distributed NAT, distributed floating APs, distributed DHCP, and then distributed metadata. We, we, we were, as I told you, very focused on, on security, so we needed um, an infrastructure and a, and a solution who you can embed it, install the security, in order to avoid um, put so many security devices around the around the, um, the CPD, and thanks to the solution we have with them, you can make contracts in order to isolate the, the, um, the villains, the sadness you want in a very, very simple way. We were looking for automation, and as I told you, it was a, a focus point, and we, we can do that uh, thanks to Ansible, and even we, can, we have the possibility to, to use Chef or, or Puppet, and of course the programmability. We, we wanted to configure our, our infrastructure in a programmatical way, and you, we can use it using the API, the, the API with, that can be accessible via JSON or via XML, or even you can configure our infrastructure using Python. We were looking integration with third parties. Uh, now we are, we're, we are using OpenStack, and we were looking for the integration, the, the integration with them, but also we, we, we have the possibility to use vSphere or Hyper-V. And as well, we can integrate the physical, the f using physical domains, because uh, we were very, very focused on, on how we can in, uh, integrate physical servers, any bare metal servers, because our idea, as I told you, is to move the current, the, the service that we are doing or, and serve in the current IT to this new global uh, cloud. So for, for us, it was very important to very easily move bare metal servers to this new world. And of course, you can install in a very easy way any external route in order to give the, 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 the layer three out for, for avoiding the service going out to at, uh, outside the, the, our CPD or even between CPDs. So um, apart from that, we, we wanted to optimize the infrastructure and give high performance to our CPD. We can do that because we can uh, ex um, expand the, the VXLAN solutions at top of the rack. And even we can avoid uh, put a lot of devices in, in the CBD, like, for instance, firewalls, load balancers, because we can redirect the traffic, exact traffic we want, to these devices and not put every single device in each rack. We can make a kind of service graph in order to send the specific traffic we want to these, to these devices. We were very focused on the integration between the overlay and the underlay, so we can do that because the ACI can talk with, the, with the, our ECS, UCS uh, hypervisors, just in installing um, an agent, the Opflex agent, who can talk with the OVS via OpenFlow. And finally, we were focusing on the, the facility, the, make easier the troubleshooting and the management because instead of trying to configure each device individually, we wanted to have um, a, a unique management console where you can see the, the, the fabric as, an, as, as a, a virtual enormous switch where you can add or delete the, the switches in a very simple way and um, just to say uh, this is the, 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 the main problems we, we have to, to accomplish. And it was, a, at the beginning, it was a very hard way to, to install this new solution because it was a, a, a new solution for, for all of our network people. But thanks to the, the engineers from Cisco who were very focused on, on, the, on helping us to, to develop it, especially Hector Fernandez, who who made a very good job with us, and I hope he will be do the same in the future. So thanks a lot for, for Recton and for all the engineering from Cisco. And just it. Thank you very much.
Uh, hi, colleagues. I want to share my experience of cloud. Uh, we are one of the largest company, telecom company in Kazakhstan, and we maintain thousands, mills, and hundreds points of present uh, big network. And now, uh, today, in this uh, year, uh, we don't have a new customer because uh, penetration for telecom service is our country very, very big, uh, very near to 100%. And we must uh, find new revenue for our business. And we uh, investigate uh, our market and uh, for new service for our customer, for business customer, for operator. And we uh, come to conclusion, OpenStack is definitely the way, uh, way to go. Uh, uh, one moment. It's our network on country map. Um, and now I uh, want to uh, talk you a few words about our company. Uh, in our work, we uh, have uh, four main principles. Uh, and all the, uh, this principles is our strongest side. Uh, first is customer focus. We work for our customer. Responsibility, innovation ability, and professionalism. Uh, when uh, we find a solution for uh, our cloud, uh, uh, we uh, won't find a solution who uh, matches these requirements. Uh, and uh, in our market, uh, work to company, big company, it's Cisco and uh, Red Hat. This company full match this requirement because uh, they have relationship and create a uh, Cisco validate design between Cisco and Red Hat. Uh, it's very important for us. Um, for, our uh, for our cloud, uh, we use uh, Cisco equipment. On physical wear, we use uh, compute from Cisco, it's UCS. We use network, it's fabric, and storage on base uh, Red Hat, and CEF, CEP, from Cisco and uh, Red Hat company. Also, for virtualization, for create virtualization layer, uh, we use uh, hypervisor virtualization KVM from Red Hat, uh, and SDN from Cisco. Uh, for cloud operation system, we use uh, OpenStack from Red Hat. Uh, this uh, this uh, uh, validate design uh, give a uh, big advantage because we create our cloud easy uh, and minimal with minimal risk. It's very important for us. It's a complex system for our, com for our customer. We use uh, this system not only uh, how us and SaaS service. We also use this uh, system uh, for creation new service for our uh, business uh, customer, for government customer. Now we have uh, DDoS protection on base cloud. We have management Wi-Fi. Uh, we have DPI service. Uh, many different service uh, for our customer on base one reliable uh, cloud platform. Uh, uh, now we have uh, advantage. Uh, we can create uh, test proofing and create new service and launch this to market in a very small period of time. Uh, the last service which we run few days ago, it's a CDN network uh, for uh, video on demand service. Mm. Uh, now, uh, are we beginning of our trip 
and I think uh, in future we create many services for our client on base our cloud platform. It's all. Thank you for your attention. Well, I think at this point, what I what I wanted to do was give everyone the chance to ask questions if we have, have questions of the panel. I know we don't have a, a ton of time left, um, but we do have a couple minutes if folks wanted to ask a couple questions of, of, of anyone or of uh, the group here. No? Feel free to come, come up to the mics if anyone has questions. Well, otherwise, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask a quick one, uh, a quick one myself, maybe. Um, you, know, you guys actually covered a lot of the topics that I was planning to ask you about, but I figured since we only had a limited time, I wanted to see if you had any advice for folks in the audience that are thinking about doing OpenStack, um, you know, the way the way you already have. You know, what kind of you know, one or two key learnings did you ha you know have you had that you would you know advise people to think about as they embark on a journey like you had? Yep. I don't. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Okay, um, I didn't focus on this because I focus in the in the maybe in the technical part, but it's very important how the engineers from the from the different departments have to work all together. It's true when I heard about the DevOps and what does it mean exactly. It it fits very well in these in these solutions, and what I mean is that. In the, in the traditional IT, it's true that all the departments were very focused in their job, in doing networking, doing security, doing compute, or whatever. And now it's true that in the cloud solutions, in the, in, if you want to, um, to go to the, to the cloud services, you, you have to, to work all together in uh, just one team. It, it's true that it's, it's, uh, it's very important. and, and and in order to obtain the goals for, 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 for this success, all the groups have to be working together and, and, and not just like working on a, as a silos. It's very, very important. Yeah. I, I don't think I can, uh, it's definitely, I agree with everything that, that um, my peers said here, but I think the one thing that we as an organization did is we got ourselves very confused between services that were below the line and services that were above the line. So services are servicing your consumer, and the reason it happened to us is because we are actually a, we are actually our service provider and our consumer at the same time. And if I made a comment in my presentation that said you've got to drop the shackles of the past, and that's what I meant by that. You've got to stop thinking that, um, well, firstly, the silos are an issue, but you've got to stop thinking that you, you have to treat something the way you've always treated it because that's the way you've operated and that's how you are. You really need to encourage everyone to totally, totally, totally rethink, not based on what you know, but based on the outcome you're trying to achieve. And very often you have to shake somebody and turn around and remind them that they need to think about whether they're answering their question above the line as a consumer or below the line as a service provider to your organisation. We didn't do that right up front, um, and I, I mentioned we'd been on the journey for a while, and it was one of the things that when we had to reevaluate our approach, we had to stop ourselves and say, what happens below the line is our first focus, assuming, of course, that we are meeting the, the above-the-line consumer demands um, based on what the client wants. Yeah. Well, do you guys have anything to add, or are we... Uh I would say, taking a, a look back on, on how our journey went with OpenStack, I would say limiting scope is a good thing when you begin. So OpenStack is really giving you a lot of toys, and all the customers usually want all the toys. But also, it's very important to have such a big distributed system really rolled out and having stably run for your customers, because that's always an expectation on their side. You need to limit yourself a little bit in the beginning, at least. So. Pick a scope you want to deliver and try to chase that scope and not try to basically broaden it every time a new release comes out, but first try to get it rolling and then think about gradually moving stuff in. That's a lesson learned from us. Our team is not infinitely big, and we, we are working very, very hard to basically get the workload done without 
stalling our customers on new features, but it's, it's a hard choice you have to make in the beginning how big your scope actually should be. Well, everyone, I think uh, at this point it looks like I'm, we're, we're about to, to get the nod that we're running low on time. But I wanted to thank everyone for, for coming today, and I wanted to thank the panelists for, for joining us and for sharing their thoughts. Um, and I hope you guys stay for the next session. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, everybody. Um, round of applause for everybody, please. <laughs>